Welcome back to this edition of On Every Front, showcasing our citizen soldiers and airmen as they answer our nation's call to duty. I'm your host, Army National Guard Staff Sergeant Adam Fishman. Sergeant Major of the Army Raymond F. Chandler III is the top non-commissioned officer in the United States Army. He advises the Chief of Staff of the Army on all matters relating to NCOs and soldiers. He sat down with us to discuss his outlook on the soldiers within our total force, fiscal challenges, and the relationship between the active, guard, and reserve components. There'll be requirements that come up that are going to have to be filled by both Army National Guard, Army Reserve, and active duty soldiers. And we can't afford to lose these relationships. Because at the end of the day, it's that trust between me and Sergeant Strom that's going to set the conditions for our success or failure and whatever we're asked to do next. So Sergeant Major, after nearly 13 years of high op tempo conflict, what must NCOs do now to keep soldiers trained and actively engaged during this time of sequestration? Well, I think you have to manage to budget. And I mean that by, look, if I'm a squad leader, you know, and that's the highest level that I can train, I need to ensure that my soldiers are the best trained individuals as part of that team uh, that they can be. We're not expecting people if they don't have the money to continue to do th the types of training that we may have been able to do over the last 12 or 13 years. What we're expecting them to do is recognize that they have a certain amount of money and train the best that they possibly can within the budget they've been given. Do you see any special challenges for the Guard and Reserve in, in context to that SAR Major? Well, uh, I hope uh, and hope is not necessarily the best technique, but I hope that uh, uh, guardsmen and reservists recognize that they are extremely important to the overall success of the Army and that they've got to be able to focus on those tasks that are reasonable, uh, achievable, and affordable within the time that they have available. What are the Chief of Staff's main priorities for the total force right now? Obviously, he wants to focus on leader development, wants to ensure that we maintain readiness, that we take care of the equipment that we have, uh, and that we recognize that we'll be in a state of turmoil in the Army over the next several years as we move through this process called sequestration. That will affect all three components of the Army. And so within your lane and what you're responsible for, if you recognize what he's asked us to do, then he trusts you that you're going to uh, actually implement what he's looking for for our Army for the future in 2025 and beyond. What is the National Guard NCO Corps doing well, and what could we do better? Well, I think just like any other NCO, uh, NCO Corps within the Ar active Army, within the Army Reserve, and within the Army National Guard, we've got a responsibility to be professionals. That means persons of character, commitment, and competence. And then within that, to understand not only what the creed says, but what it means. Okay, and I'm specifically talking about accomplishing a mission and the welfare of your soldiers. So I think all three components do that extremely well, and I'm very proud of the National Guard's ability to maintain contact, which I think is actually easier in many circumstances uh, than it may be for, for instance, the Army Reserve, where you're really centered around an armory and a town and the people that you know and live and work with. Uh, but I'm very proud of what the Army National Guard has done, what the Non-Commissioned Officer Corps has done, uh, and I know they'll do extremely well into the future. What is the most important piece of advice you could give a junior enlisted soldier? Know your job, do it well, be committed to what you have chosen to do, and be a person of character. And that means be a professional. That's the most important thing that I would expect any soldier, regardless of whether they're the most junior private to the most senior sergeant major to do. It's timeless. It means exactly what we expect of our non-commissioned officers and soldiers, both today and into the future, and it will serve them well. I tell a senior enlisted soldier the same thing I told a junior enlisted soldier. You know, you've got to be a professional. And we, you know, we talk about that, that you know, our young soldiers may not have the abilities. They don't have the abilities because the more senior soldiers aren't investing in them. 
It's a system of checks and balances and relationships that allows us to survive and thrive in this army that we have, this great army that we have. So if you're a senior, I'd say, look, you've got a duty not only to do your job, but also look after the well-being of those that you lead. And you've got to be engaged in helping them to develop and providing opportunities like you've had, you know, in order to move forward, because one day they will replace you. For what you've seen for almost four years as the Sergeant Major of the Army, how do you see the National Guard fulfilling the state and national roles? Well, I think it's extremely challenging. You know, we've increased demands as we've operationalized not only the Army National Guard, but the Army Reserve. And recognizing that the Guard has a mission within the state. Uh, so, first of all, hats off to you for being able to be so successful for both of those missions. And I would tell you that we have to be honest with one another and recognize that there may be some things that the Army National Guard is not able to do in one of those circumstances, whether that's a, a, a state mission or a federal mission, and being able to come forward and, and let us know so we can look across the Army and see which cohort, which component best fit, fit, uh, fits the capabilities that are requested. And there's more partnering and, and helping both active duty, reserve, and guard forces solve not only the federal mission, but missions that may affect the state, I think, is going to help everybody, including the American people. Sergeant Major Chandler was selected in 2011 as the 14th Sergeant Major of the Army, and his tenure has been challenging, but successful. His focus on the importance of family, the use of soldier support outlets, and the need for trust within our ranks shows the great lengths that have been taken to improve the standard at which the Army lives and breathes and how imperative it is for those in the Army profession to be synchronized in the defense of our nation. From National Guard Bureau Headquarters, thanks again for watching this edition of On Every Front. Whether at home or abroad, your National Guard is everywhere America needs us to be. Always ready, always there.